G'day, Rupert, and welcome to the Flick Mix. Thank you. The uh, congratulations on an epic-looking film. Thank you very much. The, my first question for you is: How does um, a relatively unknown Brit, um, yeah. who's directed uh, commercials and short films, mm. have as his first film a one hundred and seventy million dollar blockbuster? Um, I don't know really. It's uh, I don't I don't think it's. It wasn't just I was kind of in McDonald's and someone tapped me on the shoulder and said, do you want to do it? I mean, I'd been actively looking at projects. I met with the producers. They liked my take on it. They saw me at work. They saw the kind of work that I was doing was, you know, some of the things I've done are on a similar scale to Snow White. So it wasn't, it wasn't like I'd gone from kind of tiny, you know, independent shorts. The, some of the, the, the commercials we'd done were, were, were epic. And I think they saw, you know, sense of narrative there as well so it was you know I was very lucky I was um, yeah it's quite, looking back on it it's quite it's quite surreal but yeah no I was I was fortunate enough to get the job and how did you approach uh, you know telling this story that it's so well known by so many people I think just you know you just have to filter it through yourself you know you go back to the original and you read it and you go wow what does that mean and how would I like to see that and what's the story I'd like to tell and I wanted to tell a, a medieval a action adventure with, with very kind of vivid and visceral magical elements to it um, and kind of just threw it all into a pot together and, and started to just slowly sketch it out and, and that's how you build the world. Do you think it helped being British to approach this story? Yeah, because I think, you know, I grew up with, with Arthur Rackham illustrations and pre-Raphaelite paintings and did a lot of Shakespeare at school. So it's very, you know... And, we live surrounded by castles and stuff, so it's, it's very much in the blood. And, and and I love the kind of the magic of the folklore of the magpies and the the ley lines and the standing stones. So all those kind of things, you know, go go into that pot. It's often been said uh, by many people that uh, male Australian actors often have a hard exteriors, but it just have a, a kind of boy like innocence underneath mm. it all. Do you think that's true of uh, of Mr. Hemsworth? I think, um, you know, I, I don't think it's as cut and dry as that. I think Chris has got, a, you know, many facets to, to his performance. And I think what's great about him in this film is that he is athletic, he is dynamic, but then at the same time he's very emotional and, and, and very uh, open. And, and I think that's, that's, that's going to surprise people. There's some incredible set pieces and, mm. and fighting sequences. How did you approach filming those? Because they, they make an awful lot of sense and they're shot incredibly well. How did you I mean, you know, with, with action, you just have to kind of throw a lot of cameras at it. You know, you, you, keep, you keep immersive, you keep, you know, you, you embed yourself in. You know, we use a lot of uh, quad bikes with low cameras on. I, I had a, a rig built that a horse could, could pull so that someone could be right over the shoulder of, a, of someone who's riding on a horse. You know, we did a lot of stuff with helicopter, a lot of stuff just handheld, some some fat slow motion work. So, you know, you kind of keep chopping your angle of perspective and just keep th flowing through the action. But, you know, a lot of it's just getting getting you in there, getting you in the dirt, and that's that's kind of how I like my action. How long did it take to shoot that that final incredible charge to the castle across the beach? Um, we shot on the beach. We shot probably four or five days up in Wales, and then probably another. Uh, two or three getting us in the door back at Pinewood. So we built the castle as a set at Pinewood. So we had uh, very limited space because we'd, we'd filled the rest of Pinewood that the horses had to come in and out through the security gate. So they'd raise the gate and then go action. They'd all thunder in and then they'd go up to the castle and then they'd shut the gate. What was it like working with the, uh, the lovely Christine Stewart? She's great, Kristen. You know, I think what, what, I, what, what excited me about her was this... Um, kind of rebellious, spirited kind of, you know, she carries the world on her shoulders in, in, a, in a way. And I think that's that really, sh that, that's a hard thing to do. And I think she's so young and, and all those things really are, are, are so what I wanted Snow White to have, you know, that kind of resilience and, and that inner strength is, is very present with her. With uh, the evil queen, mm. um, it was really evident that, uh, that there'd been an awful lot of time taken to make her a, a lot, a much more complex character. Mm. There's even moments that you feel an awful lot of empathy for her yeah. situation. How important was that for you? Very important. I mean, I think, um, 
you know, you can't just, you, you, you're not born evil. And I think what's interesting is that they're kind of reflections of each other. Snow White has suffered a great loss and she's gone this way. And, and Ravenna's suffered a great loss and she goes the other way. Um, you know, I think you've got to understand where, where people come unhinged. And I think that makes them more, you know, more believable and more frightening because you know what's causing it. I think if she'd just been evil, 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 it would have been a bit one dimensional. And I think, you know, she plays it from this great place of being wounded. You know, she's, she's like a wounded animal who's going to lash out in a lot more of an aggressive way. And she's kind of marginally psychotic. And, you know, it's a really, really nice, intoxicating stew of, of things going on there. What do you most hope people take away from, from this story? I hope they, 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 they take away some of the themes, you know, and some of those ideas and some of those, you know, I, th I think it can be quite empowering, you know, and I, I think there's something in there for everyone, you know. I'm not saying there's just one message in there of be good at school. I think, you know, there's a lot of things going on in there. I, ju I just really hope that people leave remembering it and taking something away from it. I think too many films take from the viewer and don't give anything back. And I, and I hope that people carry something, some emotion from this film going on. What are some of those big themes that you think are most important to this ancient um, story? You know, there's, there's Snow White, is, there's this red rose blooming in defiance of the cold. You know, she's when, when things are bad around you, you have, you, have to, you have to defy that, you have to blossom in life, you know? Um, I think also there's obviously themes about being fair and being just. I think there's themes about um, what is beauty and how do we perceive beauty and, and, and how, how the, the pursuit of beauty at, at, at the cost of all others. So there's a lot of, you know, it's not just one point. There's a lot of things in there that are going on that I think is really exciting. And lastly, can I ask, there's been an awful lot of rumour already before mm. the film has actually been seen by most of the mm. world about a possible sequel. What can you say about that? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm in the middle of writing a sequel with, with David Kep. I've just spent the last uh, week with him just kind of talking about ideas and then he's going to go off and, and construct a draft. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, I uh, very much uh, look forward to seeing what you come up with after such Lovely. an incredible film. Great. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.